So now we're going to be looking at, in the next segment, mesotherapy using dutasteride for female patients with androgenetic alopecia. So this is going to be for the ladies. Hopefully, you know, you can appreciate that, fellas. The study titled, quote, Mesotherapy Using Dutasteride-Containing Preparation in Treatment of Female Pattern Hair Loss, Photographic, Morphic, and Ultrastructural Evaluation, unquote, by N. Mofta et al. presents an intriguing approach to treating female pattern hair loss, or FPHL. Now, this study is significant as it explores the use of mesotherapy with dutasteride-containing preparation, which has been relatively new when it comes to treating female pattern hair loss. The study's methodology involved 126 female patients divided into two groups. Group 1, consisting of 80 patients, was treated with a dutasteride-containing preparation in mesotherapy injection, while Group 2 contained 80 patients as a control group with saline. So the control group had saline injected into their scalp, and this saline had nothing in it. It was just placebo. So, just some sort of liquid with no growth properties. So, the study spanned 12 sessions with evaluations conducted at the 18th week using photographic assessment, hair pull test, hair diameter measurement, and patient self-assessment. Additionally, ultrastructural evaluations was performed for three patients. Now, the results of the study found that mesotherapy with dutasteride-containing preparation led to significant improvements in hair density, thickness, and overall hair quality compared to the control group. Photographic improvement was observed in 62.8% of patients on the treatment group as opposed to 17.5% in the control group. The hair pull test and the diameter measurement also showed significant improvements. These results suggest that the treatment, being the dutasteride scalp injections, the mesotherapy dutasteride that is, was effective. Now, looking at the ultrastructural evaluation, this examination provides unique insights into the treatment's impact on a microscopic level, which actually is a novel aspect of this study. I don't think I've seen other studies that took this approach before, too. So I really like this. There was actually a finding within some of these patients that there was a repair in the cuticle of the hair shaft, and this is the outermost part of the hair shaft. So while that is pretty interesting, and while this finding did come out of the women that were treated with mesotherapy dutasteride, we can't conclusively say that it was dutasteride's doing. But if it is strengthening hair follicles and it's reducing and it's reducing miniaturization, then yes, the cuticle conceivably, would be repaired, right? The outer hair shaft would be repaired. Now, when it comes to the safety and tolerability, the treatment was found to be tolerable, with minimal side effects like pain to the local area where the dutasteride was injected to, and to things like headache, which, although those do suck, you don't want to have a headache, you don't want to have, you know, pain, they were temporary, and this is actually a significant positive aspect of the study. The lack of serious adverse effects makes this treatment potentially more acceptable to patients. Now, this study does have a strength because it has a relatively large sample size and also the use of a control group. So clap, clap, and applaud for the researchers here. However, there are limitations here to this study, and it's the study's over-reliance on subjective measurements, like the photographic evaluations, and also the patient self-assessment as primary outcomes, that is, of course, a limitation. Now, of course, when you have day and night results between two patients, and you have day and night results between a patient's baseline and what they further experience on treatment, yes, that is obvious. We can see from the photographic evaluations if they actually grew hair, if they grew new hair in specific areas. But you want to get a more accurate look at the hair by using something like a photo trickogram where you can get a sort of microscopic review of the hair follicles. Now, while these methods are valuable, they can be influenced by personal biases or perceptions. Furthermore, the use of the hair pull test, which is used to see which hairs are about to shed by tugging on some hairs in the scalp and seeing how much comes out, 
That is horrible and very questionable. I have no idea why they would waste their time with this after getting so many women to participate in this study. Because here, depending on how hard you pull out the hair, you can pull out hairs that are about to come out, or you could pull out hairs that are just normal, but you're probably tugging on it a bit too hard. So again, there's no controlled mechanism like the pressure per square inch that you're putting on the hair shaft itself. It's just, there's too many confounding factors when you're using the hair pull test. It's more so of a rudimentary test to see if you're tugging. It's very subjective. You can't control how much pressure you're putting on each hair follicle or each hair strand that you're pulling on. So I'm very disappointed. If they used a photo trickogram, that would have been better than patient self-assessments and this so-called bullshit hair pull test. Not only that, but there could have been some bias in the ultra structural evaluation. They could have just picked the women that had the best responses and then try to use that as some sort of indicator that all women that participate in mesotherapy injections of deutasteride get these sort of improvements to the cuticle of their hair shafts, the outer hair shafts. So, in conclusion, the study by N. Mafta et al. demonstrates that mesotherapy using deutasteride-containing preparations does appear to be an effective and tolerable treatment for female pattern hair loss. The study's methodology incorporating various assessment techniques is a somewhat key strength. However, the potential of bias arising from the lack of double-blind design and reliance on subjective assessments like the hair pull tests are very notable limitations. Again, further studies with more rigorous design and objective measurement is needed to validate these findings. But nevertheless, the study provides valuable information in the growing body of research on non-surgical treatments for androgenetic alopecia in both men and also for this particular one, women and it opens avenues for further exploration into this field as well as mesotherapy dutasteride treatments. So very exciting and you know if I had to you know lick my finger put it in the air and you know see the temperature of the of uh you know how I feel about this study I would say that it's it's okay. It's it's not perfect. It does have a lot of you know subjective limitations to it but I think it does lean in the direction of mesotherapy dutasteride being a positive treatment for women. Now, there is one aspect that I think we have to caution here. That is for women that become pregnant or who may become pregnant. There's a real concern that if 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride, especially dutasteride, get into the bloodstream of a pregnant woman, it can influence the male fetus into not producing a proper phallus, you know, not producing a PP, and that could be horrific. You could get that whole amazing atheist, like, short PP, if you know what I mean, right? Um, so yeah, we have to be a bit careful about that uh, when it comes to women and their treatment with androgenetic alopecia and 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. You know, I had an argument with, not, not really an argument, but some discussion with some women on Reddit, and they were uh, very adamant on you know, saying that women know when to get pregnant and how to get pregnant. And, you know, although mistakes do happen, we have to give women the autonomy on using these treatments. And I completely agree. But <laughs> I guess as a researcher, you don't want to be responsible for introducing a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor into a, a woman, her unknowingly being pregnant during the duration of the treatment or becoming pregnant at some point, And that somehow negatively influencing the fetus, the male fetus potentially. And now, you know, we don't know people's beliefs about abortion necessarily. Maybe you can do a questionnaire on these women and kind of filter them out. But let's say that there's a woman who doesn't want to have an abortion after they are pregnant while on these treatments and they have a male fetus and that male fetus is born with a disability, particularly in their phallus, it not being, you know, there. They could have ambiguous genitalia. That is a kind of concerning. And I will put some case studies on this particular topic. I think there was some sort of case study that I saw before where a woman actually was taking finasteride or dutasteride and then she found out she was pregnant and she terminated the pregnancy when they were doing ultrasounds of the male fetus and they found out that the phallus was very ambiguous. So 
that's a concern that I have when it comes to women being treated with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Hopefully the women in the audience understand where I'm coming from. And yeah, I'm talking a bit too much. I'm, you know, I'm sorry, sorry about my voice, guys. I hope you can bear with me. My voice is just shot so much because I think I have a cold. So anyway, let's proceed. <laughs> 